This episode is brought to you by Comixology, an Amazon company and the leading digital platform for comic books. So for cheap digital comic books, check out Comixology in the link below. What is up guys and welcome to another episode of the Skid Reviews and for this episode we're going to be talking about and the masters of the universe. No, no, not that blonde haired muscled up guy, the other blonde haired muscled up guy. Yes, we're going to be talking about Thor and more particularly we're going to be talking about Thor Ragnarok and even more particularly we're going to be talking about Thor Ragnarok in the comic books. Now Thor Ragnarok the movie comes out in a couple of weeks, in the first week of November if, not, if I'm not mistaken and I am super pumped for it. We have all seen the trailers, the colors look amazing, it's Taika Waititi who's going to be directing it, he is an amazing director, he directed what we do in the shadows, the mockumentary about uh, vampires in New Zealand. It was one of the most funniest movies that I've ever seen and so I am really excited about what Taika Waititi can do with a superhero franchise like Thor. But for this video we're going to be talking about Thor Ragnarok as the story is in the comic books. Now Thor Ragnarok has been featured in the comic books uh, several times across the history of Thor in the comic books. The most recent incarnation of the Ragnarok uh, storyline was in the early 2000s or the mid 2000s. I read it like years back. Uh, I couldn't really remember all the details and it really wasn't one of my favorite storylines. And as is, uh, Thor isn't really one of my favorite superhero characters. Uh, I do like Thor, I enjoy his action-packed stories in the comic books, but he's not like uh, one of my favorites. But I am still pumped for Thor Ragnarok this November and I cannot wait to watch it. Now Ragnarok is a story from Norse mythology that means, you know, a final battle and an, in Asgard, the end of all the Nordic gods. Uh, it's, it's a really interesting story and uh, this story has been featured in the Marvel comic books for uh, several times as I've mentioned. We don't really have the time to like go through every incarnation of the story in the comic books but what we will do is uh, do a summary probably of the latest incarnation of the Ragnarok storyline in the Marvel comic books from the early or mid 2000s. We also know that Mark Ruffalo's The Hulk is going to play a very important role in this movie so we're going to break down certain storylines from Hulk comic books as well which we think could play a role in the movie. So without wasting any more time let's get straight into the breakdown of Thor Ragnarok in the comic books. Originating in Norse mythology, Ragnarok is an end of days type scenario where Odin, Thor and the rest of the Norse gods all die. In Marvel Comics's take on Norse mythology, Ragnarok is a recurrent feature the prophecy that predicts Ragnarok is pretty detailed as well. The universe will be plunged into darkness after the giant wolf Skoll devours the sun goddess Solvik. The earth is scorched to a cinder by the fire giant Surtur. Earthquakes hit Asgard, the dead will rise again, a ginormous furious serpent will get involved. Odin will fight the wolf while Thor tackles the serpent and Heimdall faces off with Loki everyone will die. And then, to round things off, Surtur will incinerate the Nine Realms. Longtime comic book fans have seen these events play out quite a few times, but the most recent Ragnarok arc from the 2000s will be the freshest in their memories. This story began with Thor on the throne of Asgard after Odin had died. Thor went a bit mad with all the power becoming something of a despot and killing a lot of his former allies. Shortly after regaining his senses, Thor returned to find Loki in possession of his magic Mjolnir. Thor goes looking for higher wisdom than the gods of Asgard. He finds the mysterious gods to the gods, also known as those who sit above in shadow, a set of super gods who masterminded the Ragnarok cycle of death, destruction and rebirth to feed off the energy that the process creates. Thor ultimately destroys Asgard's tapestry and succeeds in breaking the cycle of Ragnarok. With newfound additional strength, Thor defeats Loki's forces, decapitates his brother and takes down Surtur the fire demon. To achieve all this though, Thor had to make a great sacrifice and ended up in a limbo state for quite a while afterwards in the comic books. Confused? Don't worry, the basic fact you need to know is that Ragnarok is the apocalypse of the gods. 
For the movie version, we'd expect something similar, similar themes of self-sacrifice to resurface, alongside the familiar idea of all-out Asgardian destruction. One thing that you probably know about Thor Ragnarok is that there's going to be a special appearance from a certain giant green rage monster, Mark Ruffalo's version of the Hulk. The idea of the Hulk starring in a space-faring storyline primarily brings one comic book arc to mind, Planet Hulk. In this story, the Hulk was banished from Earth for being dangerous and uncontrollable. He didn't end up on the barren world he was meant to though, he instead arrived on a hugely populous planet which essentially resembled a Romanesque society but with aliens instead of Romans. The Hulk was forced to fight in the Colosseum to prove himself on this planet. Eventually, Hulk led a rebellion against the planet's emperor and became a renowned hero. He soon headed back to Earth for revenge, which is covered in another story arc called World War Hulk. Will Thor Ragnarok the movie have anything to do with the Planet Hulk comic series? It's very unlikely. It seems more likely that we'll see a different story here. All things considered then, there's a fair bit we can predict about Thor Ragnarok. We know it'll center on the Asgardian apocalypse cycle for starters. We also know that Thor will buddy up with the Hulk to try and save the day. It also seems likely that Loki will get loads of screen time here, seeing as everyone loves Tom Hiddleston, who doesn't? While the fate of Thor's earthly colleague seems less clear cut. Another thing to consider here is that the director, Taika Waititi, whom I absolutely love, is sure to bring some comedy to the proceedings. But with all the apocalyptic things going on and Infinity War foreshadowing, we'd expect some fairly dark undertones here. So my expectations for this movie? It looks like Thor Ragnarok is going to be a fun ride, but comic book fans should be wary of overly expecting too many things from the comic books. From the trailers, it has a different color tone and boasts of the usual Marvel quips, which is great. My expectations are managed. I don't expect it to be the best superhero movie ever, but I do hope that Thor Ragnarok will be a heck of a ride. So there you go, that was our breakdown of Thor Ragnarok in the comic books. We've seen the trailers, I love the colors, I love the tone, a very Guardians of the Galaxy-esque vibe to the trailer. I love the fact that Taika Waititi is directing this and I also love the fact that Jeff Goldblum is going to be in this movie, one of the greatest actors ever. And as I've said in the video, I do not expect this movie to be the best superhero movie ever. I don't expect it to be the best movie of the year, but I do hope that it's a fun ride and it is epic. What about you guys? What are your expectations from Thor Ragnarok? Let us know in the comments below. And come November, we hope to see a lot of you guys in the theaters in the morning with us to watch this movie together. And as always, if you want to see more content, please do leave a like and perhaps you can consider subscribing to our channel. It's free, it takes only a second, and you know what? It helps us out a lot. So yeah, until next time, I will see ya!